Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of I Am A Thing Of Rough Edges Poems by Tom Rudd. Dane reads. So, um, there's a very short blurb that I'm going to read here, but with poetry I find that the best thing to do is just to read you some of the poems that I enjoyed, so I'm going to read you some of the poems from this. I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end, and uh, we'll, we'll crack on with things. So, I Am A Thing Of Rough Edges is, at its core, catharsis. It is inspiration and it is hope. Rock bottom isn't at home, it's a pit stop. So, this was published by Whiskey and Beards Press. They have a very cool logo. Uh, fairly recent poems as well, and that kind of comes across, um, I think these were probably written over the last year or so. So we'll start here in part one with Assemble as Instructed. Step one, remove all outer packaging and lay the pieces out on an even surface. You should know what you're dealing with before you start assembly. Step 1A, people will tell you that you can't love someone else before yourself, but that isn't true, though I do envy those that get to be their own first love. Step two, Separate the pieces into groups. Take care not to cut your fingers on the sharp ones. You may need to glue a couple back together. Step 2b. I have attachment issues. Step 3. Refer to the diagram for base assembly. You will return to this later. A strong foundation is important. Step 3c. I have an irrational fear of being boring. I'm not going to stop thinking of things for us to do, even if I tire myself out. Step 4. Try your best not to get frustrated when the parts you add on don't stick too well or fall off. Progress isn't linear. Step 4D. I will almost certainly tire myself out. I think what I need is patience. Step 5. This kit will pine for you. Indulge it. But not too much. Know your boundaries. Step 5E. I'm going to apologise for everything. I like to think that it's not as bad when I'm around you. Step 6. During assembly, the time you put in is directly proportional to what you get out. Step 6F. Sometimes hours will feel like days. Step 7. Make sure you return to the foundation. Cons constant maintenance is necessary. Step 7G. I never said this would be easy. I know I'm not easy. I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to run at this point. Step 8. If the build isn't to your liking, be prepared to deconstruct and start over. The pieces are reconfigurable. Step 8H. Change is a pin pressed to my palm. I grip my teeth and pull. Step 9. This manual is incomplete. Revise steps 1 to 8 as needed. Agonise over further steps on the blank pages provided. Step 9, I. And uh, here we have a sex poem that definitely isn't about sex, but might secretly be about sex. Your head hangs as you hesitate, doting on the doorstep, wishing you could rewind and waste more time with me. Toast in hand, bare feet padding to the door, I say, don't worry, you'll be back. You smile as you step out into the sun, look around at the landscape littered with early morning light, and pause, the smile hanging on your lips like, I knew you'd take your time after all. It takes great love to stay, greater love to leave. A heavy suitcase is a long hook, and I, I am made of love. And here we have stage of grief, and uh, this, this kind of ties in with a lot of the subject matter in here because uh, somebody who was very close to the author uh, sadly passed away, and so there are a lot of, sort of grief poems in this. There's a stage of grief that comes before bereavement. I don't know what it's called, but it's there. It'll wrap you in its arms like a straitjacket, with the same unclenching panic. It'll make you unable to move, unable to talk, unable to articulate or emote or walk. And I'm talking quick, so I don't have to think. I don't have time to stop and stare and reflect. I can spit bars without splitting hairs, pretend it doesn't get to me there. Isn't time to dwell on it, because then I'll get lost in it, and that's something I don't dare. There's a stage of grief that comes before bereavement, but I didn't listen to what it was called. I saw a screw in the living room table, and that became my world for a while I didn't exist outside of that single screw. On the train ride home, I fixated on the clock. Nothing existed but the clock, and the motion, and the feeling, the sense of loss. Even though I haven't lost anything yet, because there's a stage of grief that comes before bereavement. Suddenly I am ten years old, strolling down Sheffield streets as I go to visit you again. A snake had escaped from the local zoo, so we were house-sitting for a week or two, and I'm not sure why it was venomous. And I was ten. I guess in the end you still got bit. I guess it was inevitable, because there's a stage of grief that comes before bereavement. I'm not even the person this is happening to, but I still can't seem to breathe. I feel selfish because of the toll this is taking on me. On the one hand I know I have a right to be upset, but on the other I need to be strong for you, and I can't be. You taught me the wonders of fizzy orange as a child, and now, whenever I taste it, I get dragged back in time to a point I didn't have to worry. You open my eyes to reading, and now every page is tear-stained, and every word a knife that carves your name into my eyelids. I can't exist in this town while that existence reminds me of you. I know that's not the helpful response, but I never could face my demons, so what hope do I have when they wear your face? And this one comes with a little uh, illustration. Uh, I posted this on my Instagram story, and Graham Sillers, shout out to Graham Sillers Reads Books on uh, BookTube. He enjoyed it. Uh, so it says, Ode to a Pigeon. 
Oh, thou flying rat, why hast thou shat upon my hand? Possibly my favourite poem in this collection. And then a short but sweet one here to end on. I'm not ready for the revolution. I've always said that I'd die for a cause that I believe in, but if revolution comes tomorrow, I'm not ready. And I thought that was quite relatable. So, my thoughts on this. Um, to, so Tom Rudd quite often uses rhymes and sometimes they feel forced, but I find that that's a, just a problem with rhyming poetry in general, which is why I generally prefer free verse. Um, but there is kind of a mixture of both of them here. So as with like any poetry collection, any short story collection, there were some poems I did like, some poems I didn't like, but overall, I would say I enjoyed this. I gave it a pretty, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, short and sweet review today. Uh, that's what I made of poems by Tom Rudd. I am a thing of rough edges. As always, let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. If you haven't, let me know which of the poems that I read you enjoyed the most. Hit that subscribe button if you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more. Hit that like button as well, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.